Hey, it's Tim here. In this video, I've taken yet another segment from my Dreamforce keynote breakdown. In this one, we take a look at Einstein Copilot. This is the tool being used to help analysts build and explore data much, much faster. It's the first use of AI inside of the Tableau product itself that's helping analysts build dashboards, figure out calculations. I've broken it down in the past, but in this video, we take a look at what was demoed at Dreamforce. It's changed a little bit, so if you want to know a lot more detail, this is your video. Thanks for watching. And as ever, let's get stuck in. I use it now every day, and it's really made my daily experience easier. I get all of the information at a glance, and I can take action on it really, really quickly. But you know, when you want to explore data, this is really... Again, this is another sort of framing. Then you used to build dashboards. Now you ask questions. And again, this is really important. I, 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 I cannot... <laughs> like. If you build dashboards today, if you're becoming a data analyst today and you think uh, learning how to build dashboards will be the way that Tableau is heading, I think it's changing. I think you need to become more of a data engineer, data modeling expert, metadata expert in order to enable people to do what Tableau is talking about now, how to answer, how to frame, how to contextualize questions. And ultimately, the data is going to be treated. It's going to need to be treated. It's just It's not just going to work out of the box. When you get, let's say, uh, purchase data from a superstore, it doesn't come ready to do this. When you get um, transaction data from your bank or from an online store, it does not come ready to do this. In order to get it to this place where you can actually use AI on top of it, you're going to need to clean it, prep it, put it into a data model, uh, warehouse it, make it available, uh, think about security, think about all these different things. That is where being a data analyst is going to be heading to. And that's where being a data engineer or being a data modeler will sort of pay dividends. I think the people who build dashboards today are just going to move further back into the stack and do more things to enable these kinds of experiences. So everyday people can just go and ask questions. ...where the Tableau superpowers come in. Tableau is easy to use. You can easily slice and dice your data however way you want. But normally, when you start in Tableau, you got a blank screen and some data, and you have to kind of learn the product. You have to know how to drag and drop where the features are. You need a visionary around you. You need the documentation. You need experts to help you get successful. But what if we brought AI into the experience? What if you had Einstein with you that understood Tableau, could help you answer your questions more easily? Well, the future of Tableau is to have AI embedded in the exploration experience, right. where AI fully understands how to use the product, where AI understands the meaning of your questions and can help essentially do the drag and drop for you. So it's not about either or, it's an and. It's augmenting the experience, the exactly. experience making it 10 to 100 times easier and making all of you more productive. That is the goal. And so today, I'm pleased to announce the Einstein Copilot for Tableau. So, uh, Einstein Copilot, June 24. That's almost a year away, just uh, just under a year away. Um, this is going to be sensational. I think this is, this is why it has such a long run-up. Uh, so much has to happen. And I think there's some fundamental questions that Tableau have to answer before this kind of tool gets deployed. And yes, you guessed it, it'll probably be cloud first. You won't get this for Tableau Server. <laughs> no way. Tableau Server's probably got a 25 uh, release, if that makes sense. I just, the, the more I think about sort of uh, Salesforce being a SaaS company, the more I think about where Tableau is heading, I just cannot see how some of the uh, ideas they're thinking about here come to Tableau Server in an expedient way. Because like I said before, um, for these things to work on Tableau Server, the requirements on infrastructure are just going to keep going up and up and up until the cost of doing those things kind of pushes you to the cloud, honestly. Um, I've not I've not sort of been in touch with Tableau Server for the last couple of years now because I just haven't needed to use it as much. Tableau Cloud has been the predominant uh, side where clients are working. And so actually knowing how to manage the back end and infrastructure of that um, is almost sort of non-existent because all you have to do is go into online.tableau.com and manage the front end user face there. So um, I'd be really intrigued to know what are the server requirements? What is the server usage of a server today? 
Um, and what are the features that we get in the cloud that aren't available yet that would sort of increase that? And as Tableau roll out these AI features, how is that going to play out long term? Anyway, interesting, interesting, interesting sort of thing to see play out. Oh, yes. The Einstein Copilot is really going to be a core part of the Tableau experience that enables you to ask questions of your data, and it'll basically explore it for you. It'll give you better results because it understands a lot of the context. You'll have better best practices built in, and ultimately, you'll just be more successful. You'll be able to ask more questions and drive more value to your organization, or you can just put your feet back up and enjoy the rest of your day. So let's see Einstein Copilot in action. So for that, please welcome Honto okay. May. Honto. Thanks, Francois. In the next four minutes, I'm going to show you how Einstein Copilot, backed by the Einstein Trust Layer, can speed up and improve the quality of your data analysis. Here in Tableau Prep, I have customer purchase data for a nationwide chain. He's doing this on an iPad. Oh, no, he's on I want to use this data to cool. create personalized experiences for my customers that'll drive incremental revenue. To do so, I need to know where my customers are, so I need their postal codes. Unfortunately, my postal codes are trapped in this customer mailing address column. Right. Normally, I'd have to figure out how to write a calculation to extract this, mm -hmm. but with Einstein, all I need to do is ask in natural language. And on the fly, Einstein is able to create this calculation for us. <laughs> now, all I need to do. Now, I think people have seen this demo before, which is why the crowd didn't uh, have sort of a big reaction. A lot of the people at this conference were at Tableau Conference. And so they've seen this demo, they've seen this example before. That said, it doesn't take away from the, uh, let's say, awesomeness of this, because this is, this is sort of why I believe AI is fundamentally going to change the way analytics is done. You see, previously, uh, if you just look for this problem, um, let's say you're a data analyst and you don't, you're not, you're not like a uh, an experienced data analyst. You've been working in the field maybe a year or two years, okay? And this is the data set you get. And someone asks you, "Hey, how do you how do you extract the postcodes from uh, this uh, column?" Your first instinct might be to uh, pass out the commas to get the final field of each column which would still leave you with uh, Florida 32244 USA. And then the next thing you might do is to say, okay, if uh, you find any one of these states, uh, go ahead and remove that, which will leave you with 99210 and then USA. But you see, that's not always consistent. You see North Carolina uh, down here is uh, 28405 and doesn't have a country on the end. So sometimes it's USA, sometimes it's US. And you get into this really messy world where if you really have to clean this, you kind of use brute force method and you apply like a really convoluted way of passing this in steps, maybe 15, 16 steps to get to where you need to. And then you kind of go from there. Well, the experienced analyst will be able to look at this text and say, hmm, there's a pattern here. The postcode is essentially um, a certain number of digits followed by letters, essentially, right? And so we can actually go and find that in the string by just looking for that using that pattern and the technology that helps you do that is called regex now you wouldn't know the term regex you wouldn't even you might stumble across it if you let's go into if so let's say you go into reddit and you ask a question you wait a few days someone replies or you google you come across this thing and it's called regex then you go to regex 101 and you start trying to use it and you're like okay this is interesting you go down a rabbit hole uh, 30 minutes later you're now figuring out how to write regex for this and it works, but it doesn't work some of the time. Other times you go test it. And so you're not so confident. So you try this thing and you kind of move on. That whole flow probably has taken 40 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. If you're super fast, you know what to search and you're kind of adept and you're kind of really going down this route of exploratory sort of data analysis. That said, the simple fact that you can just go in and type the question, and say, I want the postcodes. You don't have to know the term regex. You don't have to know uh, regex pattern matching. You don't even have to go to regex 101 or even ask the question. You can just go and type the ask and the AI tool helps you figure out what you need to know. And here's the added bit. Now that you see that term regex p uh, extract or whatever, that should pique your interest. If you're a good data analyst, that will pique your interest and go, huh, what is this? And so you then go Google that thing and you understand what it is. 
And now not AI isn't, hasn't just solved the problem. It's also giving you a shortcut directly to the thing you need to learn and the way it's working in order to enhance that. So now you kind of start to use AI as a way of discovering things you need to learn as well as a way of helping you, which is sort of a double-edged uh, uh, thing. The next time you come to this, you'll ask specifically, hey, can you use regex to solve this kind of problem? Uh, it's quite complex. And now you're having a much higher level discussion with AI. You're still using AI, but you still understand what's going on and you're building your understanding as you go along. So it's also helping you with data literacy. So I think this is a, this to me is probably the biggest opportunity that Tableau has just to help everyday data analysts who actually still do build uh, data sets and or data models and or visualizations. And more importantly, it's also going to help bring the skill level up for everyone who's already doing this stuff. It's going to bring them right up so they too have access and awareness of things like LODs, all these complex terms like Seth Atkins. It's not going to solve the problem, but it might just alert you to the capabilities behind these things. Anyway, let's keep seeing the demos and see the examples. Fortunately, my postal codes are trapped in this customer mailing address column. Normally, I'd have to figure out how to write a calculation to extract this, but with Einstein, all I need to do is ask in natural language. And on the fly, Einstein is able to create this calculation for us. Now, all I need to do is give it a name. And voila, a new column in my data with the customer postal code. Calculation what I would be really interested to know is what's in the reference tab here. I was just thinking about it. I was like, huh, there's a reference tab. Is a reference tab showing you what it's doing? Like the, the nice thing with websites like Regex 101 is that it shows you how it's working. What I would love Einstein Copilot to do is to almost play through an example of the calculation in the context of Tableau to show you what's happening and even show you what's going on. I've put this here. I've done this there. And almost, almost guide you through the steps. Uh, you know, chat GPT can do this today. It will tell you, do this, do this, do that. Obviously, it's not perfect. But if you're training a model specifically around Tableau, then actually it should be possible to be able to instruct it and give you instructions on what exactly is going on. Almost reverse write the blog post that you would write if you'd figured, how, figured out how to do this. Yes. Now, all I need to do is give it a name. And voila, a new column in my data with the customer postal code. And I did all of this in a matter of seconds and without writing one line of calculation code. So with Einstein, you and anybody can use Tableau Prep to transform the data they need into the format they want. So how are we going to reach these customers, though? Well, did you know that you can use Tableau to visually explore your audience data and to create audience segments in data cloud? Yeah. Wrong screen. Oh. <laughs> We're good? OK, there we are. A little excitement <laughs> there. So I have just connected, with the help of my friends back there, uh, to data cloud. Um, now, when I'm presented with a blank slate like this, Interesting. I ask myself, where the heck do I begin? But I the really interesting thing here is that Einstein is already available on the right hand side. And the right hand side has become this sort of contextual place to find out more about the data set, more about what's going on, more about the metadata inside of Tableau. And it's sort of grown legs. This is also where uh, explain data used to be. I kind of feel like that's going to get sort of pushed to the side now uh, because you'll have ask data, explain data. Those are all going to go away. And Einstein and uh, Tableau GPT and or Carlson metrics will sort of sit in this space more squarely ready to help you sort of answer questions and pull out insights rather than sort of forcing you to come up with the answer or question uh, yourself. Um, the other nice thing here is obviously this is a web edit experience and this is a draft. So that means he's exclusively using the authoring experience in web edit. And um, last edited this September the 12th, that would have been the time of the demo. So he's using a sort of live take of this, um, if that makes sense. All these details do matter because I think um, a lot of people think about Tableau in the desktop sort of setup, when in reality, that's not how most of it works. That's not how most of Tableau demos anything anymore. It's all done in the browser. And so um, it's interesting to see that. I don't think you'll get the same experience in the desktop. 
I just don't think that will pull through unless you're a Tableau cloud customer. I kind of think this is going to be a really a smoother experience in the web because that's essentially where this will be running. Otherwise, you can just imagine sort of the back and forth uh, between your local client and your laptop and Tableau servers when this stuff is running. Um, but it will still be interesting to see. Now, the customer purchase history, what is not clear is if this is a data set in Salesforce, and that is why Einstein Copilot and uh, this technology is working really well, or if this is going to work across non-Salesforce based data sources as well. So things like in your Snowflake, in your Databricks database, whatever those are, um, that detail is still not clear. I assume it will work everywhere and Tableau will be running this technology on the cloud, looking at these data sets and sort of processing them. That's how some of the uh, past features have worked. There's something called Data Change Radar, which has essentially been taking snapshots on your server and then analyzing that on your cloud instance and then pushing you alerts when something changes that shouldn't have changed. So super interesting uh, little little nugget. Let's see how it actually works. So I've just Stein has got you covered. Using generative <laughs> AI and statistical analysis, Einstein's able to understand the context of your data. And in doing so, Einstein is able to suggest relevant business questions to kickstart your analysis. Now that's really Let's good. Let's take a look at this I'll one about that, patterns um, of my sales over different product categories. And look, with one click and without having to drag a single pill onto a shelf, I'm able to see the viz that shows my sales for all my different product categories. But what yeah. about this pattern Einstein was looking at? I can see, yeah, that's right. Outdoor sporting goods are popular in the summertime. That's not a surprise, but that gives me an idea. I know that our in-store experiences drive bigger purchases compared to online. What if we invite these outdoorsy and sporty people back into a store with an event like a outdoor pet first aid class? Well, how am I gonna do that? First of all, we're gonna use those postal codes we extracted earlier, and you guessed it, we're gonna ask Einstein. Yeah. Show me the location of customers who bought sporting goods in the last three months by zip code. All right, I see all my customers on a map. That's all right, but what about my stores? How far are these customers from store locations? And look, oh, there we go. Without knowing so, anything about map layer. So I'd seen this before, but I was paying attention to what was going on and what changed. And the great thing about this. <sighs> So, see, customer transactions, store locations. Store locations is in which, there we go. So there's two data sets in this data model. Uh, one is customer transactions, one is store locations. And essentially what they're doing is relating the customer transaction to the store level data, which gives us two spatial fields. Um, the uh, city or... Yeah, there's a customer location field. So it could be the city or the whatever um, of the customer, their address. And then you have um, the location from the store. And so to bring these two together, you are creating map layers. Uh, you're putting the two on top of each other. Because they're in the same data set, they have a data model relationship. So they should it should naturally work um, nicely. You can do that without a relationship. You can just bring on your store locations as a separate data source. And a new feature, ooh, nearly a year ago now, allowed you to basically overlay two separate data sets on a map without having to do any sort of join or relation to them, which is kind of powerful actually, because it allows you to bring contextual sort of map layers without having to like do the dirty work of uh, blending it or doing whatever you needed to do to make the map work. So this is quite nice. Now, why I like this demo is because it kind of shows that iteration. It kind of shows a Tableau kind of going through the steps. And again, I believe the language that's being used here is generally authentic. It's kind of what you'd ask in terms of the analysis. If you're asking good, good questions, that is a skill in itself. But I think this is a fair reflection of what people would actually do with AI. And it's doing what you'd expect it to do. Now, what we can't tell by this demo is how often is it good at doing this? Because you know, sometimes with AI, these things just, you know, 90% of the time they're okay. Uh, and sorry, 90% they're good. 10% of the time they're okay. And when they fail, they fail epically, right? So 
this looks pretty good. It's doing a few complex things, latitude, longitude, bring it all in. There's levels of detail here that are on there on both the custom and the store locations and the marks pane. There is coloring uh, going on. Um, you could argue potentially there's some buffering going on. I don't know if the size of the circle, yeah, the size of the circle represents the custom account from that store. So I actually think it's sort of interesting because the customer, you know, the custom account maybe relates to like, um, maybe it's a specific town uh, for these customers and it's just showing you where uh, those people are coming from in those towns. And that's why certain towns have bigger or smaller circles. Um, but you have customer city, customer, I don't know, something. Uh, I can't see the location hierarchy. So <laughs> again, unnecessary levels of details, unnecessary level of uh, breakdown of the details here. But it seems pretty good. And you know, the demo adds up. That's all That's all I'm trying to make sure. Like, is this a far-fetched demo? No, it's not. And it's probably something you'd get asked to do. And you'd be asked to put this in a dashboard. Now, the super interesting thing here is just imagine that the whole of the left-hand side doesn't exist and all you have is the Einstein column on the right and the customer location chart, and that's all you get. What if that's the experience of Tableau going forward, right? For every person, for everyone, that becomes the experience. But they're trying it here first with data analysts to kind of test if it's good and if it's bad, but slowly over time, this experience where you type and you see charts will be pretty much the core experience of Tableau. What do you think? <laughs> Let's carry on. Or geographic roles in Tableau, I was able to create this intuitive yet complex map viz with Einstein. But don't forget, Tableau at its heart is an interactive and visual tool. I can easily grab these customers from San Francisco and with our integration with Salesforce, send these customers up. Okay as a audience segment. Now that is a, <laughs> that's a pretty sick feature if you say a Salesforce customer. Just being able to select the, do the analysis, select the uh, customers, uh, create a segment and push it back into uh, Salesforce. I mean, that is, if you're a Salesforce customer and a tablet customer, that is chef's kiss. That is, that is perfect, right? Like that is the dream. Now in reality, <laughs> not many people have the ability to do that or sort of trusted to do that but in reality like if that was your flow and you could enable that and don't forget this has not been published this is still exploratory analysis and it's like a it's an easy thing to forget we're not going from dashboard to salesforce here we're going from uh sort of detailed discovery so an analyst has been asked to go and find this customer segment and push it to um where they need to get to um, as soon as that question comes back, boom, they can just go back into the chart they built without publishing anything and push it off into, into Salesforce. So I think that's also a really nice um, celebration of Tableau's heritage. It was always a data exploration tool and it's kind of easy to miss in this demo, right? Because you're so caught up in the feature. But actually the fact they didn't publish it before doing this, I think that's super powerful. It's super important. Going straight to the action rather than this whole like, you know, governance and publishing thing. Like if you're empowered to do this, just go ahead, push it to the Salesforce instance and Move on to the next task. Perfect. And I did all of this without leaving Tableau. Now, oop, I can't get to the screen. Oh, sorry, my bad. And now my uh, my marketing team has <laughs> all the information the they need. April deserves a hero's cake. Uh, activate the segment. And <laughs> in a demo, when, when something goes wrong, and like, you know what's gone wrong, but the person who's experiencing it go wrong uh, at the moment it doesn't do what they're expecting it doesn't matter if they're on point it doesn't matter if they're about to nail the demo nothing matters as soon as something goes wrong your brain just goes into like like freeze mode because you're like <laughs> what's going on here you can't really think fast enough to kind of rescue yourself so for april to sort of notice that and catch that moment and get hunter back onto on, on track it's like that is that is uh that is superhero stuff uh, I'd like to say not all uh, heroes have cakes, but uh, April definitely deserves one there because <laughs> it's a small thing and I'm sure Honto super appreciated it at the time. But it's so easy, so easy in that instance to just freeze for like two, three minutes, fix it, and off you go. This. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> there we Gosh, go. Damn it, guys. Like really this and to all my customers. You know what? Like, and yes. <laughs> The thing that's really unfair here is just that Honto is not controlling the transitions between uh, the slides. So from phone to laptop, Honto is not controlling that. So on top of like things going wrong, uh, like whoever's controlling the PowerPoint is just not working quickly enough. So um, it's not. It's one of those sort of compounding effects. It's kind of funny, but yeah. Anyway, it looks uh, pretty pretty good. I did manage, and maybe this is why we didn't have a good demo, I managed to sneak my dog into the keynote presentation. Uh, all right. Now, in summary, Einstein Copilot, backed by the Einstein Trust Layer, will let anybody who can ask a question visually explore their data in Tableau. And with our deep integrations into Data Cloud, you can get the insights you need to connect with your customers faster. And back to you, Francois. Awesome, Ooh. great job, Honto.